Hi, I'm Mindy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a wrap up of all of the horror that I read in the month of August. Most of the horror that I read in August was for the Spooky Smart Bees Readathon, which was hosted by Jordaline Reads and Biblio Oscura. And I didn't get all of the prompts completed, but most of them I did. So the first one I completed was to read a book over 400 pages. I actually finished two books over 400 pages and they were both 509 pages each actually. So the first one was The Ruins by Scott Smith and this is a survival horror story about a group of friends vacationing in Mexico and they decide to leave the beach and go look for some ruins in the middle of the jungle because one of their new friends brother goes and is missing so they're going to look for this guy's brother and things go terribly wrong and this book was great it was gruesome it was pretty bloody and yucky in parts and it just makes you feel all of the icky and creepy things and these were the scariest plants that I've ever encountered or read about that that's for sure the ruins best killer plant book ever <laughs> this is also the best survival horror novel I have read so far it is truly great and so much fun and perfect read for summer so I'm glad that I read that for August and the other long book that I finished in August was Lisey's Story by Stephen King and this was also for the If You Got It Read It Challenge of reading a cover by. The If You Got It Read It Challenge is hosted by Megan and Sue at the Spinebreakers and this is my cover by because I could not leave it at the store when I saw that naked hardback. Love that. I started this in July for the Horror in 24 readathon, but I was not able to finish it until um, about halfway through August. So I'll talk about it now because it's another big, big book. Lisey's story follows Lisey, who is the wife of a famous author who has just died and she's working through the grief process and going through all of his things. It's a very sad story and there is someone who is after some of his, the husband's belongings and she does not want to give them up but this guy is kind of a creep. So this was a little bit hard to get into at first. It was a little bit slow uh, and a lot of made up words in it, but they were kind of like inside, um, inside things from the couple's relationship. And eventually I, was totally caught up on the lingo and it was smooth sailing from there. I think the difficulty of going through a loved one's things after they have passed on, I think that was portrayed really well. The grief was 
portrayed really well and the action, the antagonist, and just a lot of good things going on in this book. But it definitely was not my favorite Stephen King. The next prompt that I completed for the Spooky Smart Bees readathon was to read a book by a black, indigenous, or person of color author. And for that, I read Go Summer by Tanan Reeve Du, which is a collection of short stories. And as is the case in most short story collections, some I like more than others. But they were all pretty good. Pretty good. This was a good collection. Um, the standouts to me, the ones that I enjoyed the most, were the first story, which was The Lake. The only novella in the collection, which was Ghost Summer. And all of the stories in the carrier section, I really super enjoyed. I don't know if it's just the time, but all of those stories were about uh, an outbreak of a disease of some sort, and those really hit hard for me as well. So that entire section, which was Patient Zero, Danger Word, Removal Order, uh, Herd Immunity, and Carriers, I loved all those stories. And I gave that all seven of those five stars and the rest, I think there's eight other ones, I gave 3.5 stars and I averaged the score to four stars. Ghost Summer also fulfilled the challenge, the prompt of reading a book by a female author to Nanareve Du is a female author, so that worked for that as well. Next challenge was to read a vintage horror novel, something written between the 70s through the 90s. For that, I read The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. This is a short little novella and I really enjoyed it. This is the book that the Hellraiser series is based on, and it was a bizarre little story, and I think it got the creepy factor down great. And now I'm ready to rewatch the movie now that I've read the book, so I'm looking forward to that. I also read this book for the first challenge in the three-month Halloween reading challenge, which is hosted by Richard at Are You Into Whore? And the first challenge, which was the one for August, was to read a book that was published more than 31 years ago. So those challenges lined up really well. So it counted for both. Hooray! And the last horror book that I read in August was Wounds, Six Stories from the Border of Hell by Nathan Ballingrod. And this was not for a challenge for any reading challenge or readathon, this was for my personal horror awards reading project. And Wounds was nominated for a This Is Horror Award. And I started it in July, but I didn't finish it until about the 10th of August, so I'll talk about it in this wrap up. Like most short story collections, some stood out more than others. These were very strange stories. Um, I don't know how to describe them, but they were all very unique. 
there were three that really stood out to me and that I loved enough to give five stars. And those were Skull Pocket, which is about a cursed traveling carnival type thing. And I loved <laughs> the cursed carnival idea, the atmosphere, the just the weirdness of it. And another thing that I loved, they had a different narrator for each story of the six stories. And the narrator of Skull Pocket was the same narrator as the fisherman, which if you've been watching my channel a while, you might know is my favorite book. And that audiobook had such an impact on me. And I heard this voice and I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like instantly sucked right back into that place. But I don't know if that's because that narrator is just such a gosh darn good narrator. He just, man, man, I enjoyed that story. Skull Pocket was awesome. And I think it's the third story in the collection. So when I got to that point, I was like, oh yes, now I'm seeing, now I'm seeing the appeal. Now I'm seeing why this is winning awards and such. And then... The Visible Filth was also a really great story that takes place mostly in this rundown bar and it has to do with a cell phone someone leaves behind and they find some really weird pictures and stuff on it and it leads them down a really bizarre, creepy road. This is the story, The Visible Filth is the story that the Wounds movie is based on. And I've seen some really bad reviews for that movie, but I thought it was a pretty good adaptation to this story. I read, I watched the movie after I read the story, and I thought it was a pretty good movie. But that's having the background of the story. Maybe it doesn't make a whole lot of sense just as a visual medium without knowing the story. But the story is also kind of strange. <laughs> so maybe these weird stories are not for everyone. I don't know. But I really like them. And the other favorite story in this collection was The Butcher's Table, which I believe is the last story. And Butcher's Table takes place on, it's like a cursed pirate ship in hell. <laughs> if that sounds awesome, it's because it is. Or at least I thought it was. It was a great story. So those are the five horror novels that I managed to read in the month of August. Have you read any of these? What do you think of them? How did the spooky smart bee readathon go for you if you participated? If you like this video, you can hit like and subscribe, and I'll be back very soon with another book-related video. Thanks. Bye!